Assessing a patient with diabetes and a foot ulcer is a common thing we all do in everyday clinical practice and I think it's important to recognise that there are many aspects uh, of the patient that you'd need to take into account but specifically taking into account the risk of amputation and the potential benefit of revascularization, then I will use a uh, classification system and the classification system I favour is the Wi-Fi system which was uh, developed with the Society for Vascular Surgery. And what that does is tells me as a clinician or gives me some information about the potential for benefit from revascularization and the potential that this patient may end up with an amputation. Uh, and what it does is uh, separate and categorize a number of important components of the foot, including the uh, severity of the wound, the severity of ischemia, and the severity of foot infection. And that's why the non-invasive vascular lab test is so helpful because that really helps categorize the severity of perfusion deficit. And this is very important in terms of both uh, clinical management and prognostication. Uh, the imaging techniques uh, principally used are duplex ultrasound, uh, CT angiography and magnetic resonance angiography. And they're all very reliable tests to uh, establish whether a patient has PAD but clearly some of them are invasive uh, and they're more expensive. Um, and for me in my clinical practice, uh, the issue with those tests is that they give you a roadmap and that's very helpful because uh, it helps you plan any intervention. But it doesn't tell you anything about the potential of a wound on a patient's foot to heal. And it doesn't tell you anything about whether that patient is at risk of amputation. All it gives you is a roadmap. It doesn't tell you anything about the perfusion deficit, which is very important, especially in patients with diabetic foot ulceration.